What's going on people? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another player ratings. It is the final Premier League game of the season and we have finally have top four secured. We had to take it the scenic route. You know us, Chelsea. Chaos is basically our middle name. But we have got there eventually. It's a shame for Leicester City who aren't going to be in the top four and I was really hoping that Chelsea would get a win, Leicester City would get a win, and Manchester City would get boots out of top four at the last minute. But United had to get the obligatory penalty. I do know I said City as well. That was a little mistake. Help me, I'm still too busy just trying to relax off this match. So if my if my words don't come out the right way, please allow me. But before I start this review, I just want to say, if you haven't done so already, please don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. And also don't forget, don't forget to press the bell notification button as well to be the first guy to know whenever I release any new content. Now, the first half more or less came and went until about 35 minutes in. We didn't really see any big chances from either sides until then. Both teams played, started the game in a 3-4-3. Which meant both teams were going to be defensively solid and it was going to it was going to be hard for both teams to break the other down. Chelsea were playing defensively minded and Wolves were playing defensively minded as well because they wanted to try hitters on the counter. Not really much changed from the lineup except Kepa was changed up with Willy Caballero coming in goal. And Percy, I think Willy Caballero had a, had a much better performance than what we would have expected of Kepa. He was calm whenever he was needed i do want to say he didn't have much to do in this game and to be honest wolves were poor and if i'm a wolves fan I'm, i'd be sitting there thinking we really haven't taken the game to chelsea in either of the games we played against them the 5-2 game it started off as tight but as soon as we got the first goal in that tamori screamer the game just flew further and further away from wolves and before they knew it they were 4-0 down in about 60 minutes that game was thrown out for them and in this game as well they didn't play well. They really didn't play well. Going forward, they didn't offer much. When they brought in Adama Traor in the second half, he offered a bit more pace into the attack, but it still didn't seem to click well for them. I thought our defense handled them pretty well whenever they tried getting forward. Didn't have a, a, couple, a lot of chance on them. Ruben Neves kept trying pot shots because he knows our record with long shots, but it just never worked out for him. And honestly, I think Wolves' entire approach to this game was just poor and they didn't really change things up. And I also think the time we got the first the first and the second goal also was killer for them because it came straight before half time. And it's something that we're starting to make a bit of a habit of. The first half just dragged for ages. Both teams weren't really doing much. There weren't really any team dominating. We were dominating on possession, but we were still struggling to find ways through. Then just on the stroke of half time, Marcus Alonso gets felled down for a free kick. You can dispute whether he went down too easily or not. But in my opinion, we've had so many BS VR, VAR decisions go against our way. I don't care. I really don't care. Sometimes something has to go our way. It is what it is. Mason Mount's free kick was beautiful. And I saw that and I was having shades of him as a 13-year-old in that video that Chelsea have been putting all over YouTube where he's like, I'm going to put this top bins or something like that. I don't remember the words of it, but he smashed it top bins. And this one, execution was put to perfection. And as soon as we got the first goal, the second goal came as well. Pulisic with some decent build-up play. Lades the ball out to Mason Mount, who finds Olivier Giroud with a killer through ball. Olivier Giroud beats Rui Patricio. Has a test of strength battle with Connor Cody. Wins it and smashes the ball into the net. 2-0 Chelsea. And what's his name? Nuno Espirito Santo's half-time team talk has just been thrown completely in the mud. As soon as that happened, half-time comes across. Frank Lampard is probably looking at us like we have hit them exactly where it hurts at the perfect time. And then the second half was just all about game management. From the first minute of the second half, we went there to just try and slow down the game as much as we could. Mess with the tempo of the game. Mess with Wolves' attack. Try and slow down the game wherever we can find possible. And Jorginho and Kovacic were so good at that. Jorginho can hold the ball for ages and then just find the perfect pass. And the pass isn't, doesn't even need to be progressive. There was a lot of backwards passes today. But we didn't really need to win. The ball was in our court. We, If we drew today, if it was a boring 0-0, we would still get top four. The 2-0 is just a flex, if we're being honest. So game in the case of game management, I'm really happy with the way we played today. Because we didn't play anything too risky. The two goals came at the perfect time. And... The free kick was a huge part of that. If we didn't get fell down, we'd probably go into half time at 0 0 if we're being honest. But we take our chances as they come, and there weren't a lot of chances in that game for either team. Wolves, I think, had about one shot on target in that entire match. 
we didn't have anything until the 35th minute, which is a nice ball, I think, from Reese James into Olivier Giroud. And bar that, there was barely any chances in that game. Second half, we saw I pushed the ball a bit more. I think some of our finishing could have been a little bit better. But our main focus was just trying to see the game out, trying to slow it down as much as possible. And we did our job. We did what we had to do, and we've got top four. Uh, let's move into the player ratings. Now. I'm going to start with Willy Caballero. Caballero is going to get a six from me. I think he didn't have a lot to do, but he kept a clean sheet. At one time, he got called out for the shot on target. He did well with that cross as well. That turned into a shot. He did very well to react to that very quickly in unforeseen circumstances. So he's going to get a six from me. Reese James, I'll push to a seven. I thought he was good going forward. Some of the crosses were very inviting, but it was going to be very hard to try and find some with the way Wolves are shaped up defensively. But I think he had a good performance, so I'm going to give him a seven. As per Equator, um, I'm going to give a six. I thought it was very solid defensively. Going forward, uh, not really much I can remember, but I don't really think there was anything wrong with his performance today, so I'm going to give him a six. Uh, Kurt Zuma, best defender we had on the pitch. I thought he was very calm. His recovery, his recovery runs back. His recovery tackles were all brilliant. And whenever there was a Wolves attack going, going forward, he was usually the guy snuffing it out. So he's going to get a seven from me. Antonio Rudiger, um, I thought it was a bit rash at times. Didn't have too bad of a game. But I still think out of all the defenders, he was the worst one. So I'll probably push to a five for Antonio Rudiger. I thought it was a bit rash, got caught out a couple times. But we weren't made to pay for it. Marcus Alonso, thought he struggled a little bit going forward. Defensively, I think with the case for Lonzo, if he was just a little bit quicker, and I don't mean in terms of pace, I mean in terms of putting out the shot quicker, finding the pass quicker, he slows down too much on the ball. And I think that's just where it hurts him. So I'm going to... might be harsh. And rip me in the comment section if you don't believe, don't agree with me. But I'm going to give him a 5-2. Um, Jorginho, I'm going to give a 7 because I thought his game management was excellent today. He was brilliant on the ball. Didn't do anything too spectacular. But he kept the game... He kept the game in Chelsea's hands. He kept the tempo of the game in Chelsea's control. And it was frustrating as hell for the Wolves players. So he's getting a 7 from me. Mateo Kovacic is getting an 8. And I know Mason Mount will give him man the match. Me personally, I'm giving Mateo Kovacic because I thought he was brilliant in possession. I thought he, pro he progressed and transitioned the ball from defence into attack perfectly. And he showed all the characteristics... Uh, uh, all the characteristics that he's shown this season as to why he should be player of the season. I think he's been excellent this season. So Kovacic, I'm going to give him an eight. Man of the match and my player of the season personally. Mason Mount, he's also going to get an eight. He had the goal and the assist for the game today. He was the best attacker on the field, in my opinion. His link up with Olivier Giroud is excellent today. And you can't really complain about his performance. Goal and assist, brilliant performance from him today. He's going to get an eight from me. Olivier Giroud. I'm going to give a 7. I thought he was always asking questions to the Wolves defenders and he was always fighting against them. It was always a battle to try and get those 50-50s and those balls in the air. Like I said before about the uh, link up with Mason Mount, who's excellent, and they linked up brilliantly for Olivier Giroud's goal just on the stroke of half time, which again, he's making a habit of and is great to see. So Olivier Giroud's going to get a 7 from me. Christian Pulisic. I'm going to give him a 6. I don't think he was as involved in the game as he has been usually. He had he did help in the build-up play for the second goal, but compared to his performance recently, I think he struggled a bit today. He was triple, he was double and triple marked out of the game, and it is something that he has got to get used to now because someone with that good dribbling skills and that dangerous to to defend against when that when you're one on one against or even in the case of Liverpool like when it's three on one and he's still finding his way through. He's got to learn to get used to it. So I think it's just a learning curve from him. So six from him today. Moving on to the bench. Um, Loftus Cheek, I didn't really see much of him. But I don't, I don't think we saw much out of a lot of the substitutes. Because we didn't make many subs until very late in the game. The game was done anyway. Loftus Cheek's going to get a five. Um, Hudson Odoi didn't see much either. I'm going to give a five. Pedro, it was great to see him. Because I think that's going to be his last appearance from Chelsea. So it's great to see him. It's a great. It's a shame he didn't get the good bite that he deserved at the fans all around for the guard of on, for the lap of honor or anything like that. But he's been a great servant for the club. He popped out with a lot of crucial goals in the 16-17 season where he was amazing, and he's been a great servant for us. He has declined over the last couple of years, but you can never fault his work ethic. So it's been great to see Pedro, Tammy Abraham. 
had a couple chances to score, and I think if he had be he had a better finish, he would have done better. But I'm gonna give him a six still. And bar that, I think that's the end of my player ratings. Chelsea are in the top four. I will see you guys next week for the FA Cup final. Hell, we might be doing a fallout for top four video, but that depends if Neil from Beyond the LCFC wants to do it. But guys, I'll see you guys very, very soon. Enjoy this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and peace.